Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Permit CAE webinar series where Adam Schmelko from the Charles University in Prague will present utilizing GPUs in scientific algorithms. This webinar is being recorded and we will share uh, the recording both in the Permit CAE website and uh, the YouTube channel. And after the presentation, we will have some time to address questions from the audience. So if you have any questions, uh, write them in the Q&A function of Zoom and we'll uh, have that time at the end. The materials that we will share after the webinar are licensed under a CC BY 4.0 license, except where further licensing details are provided. Permit COE is the HPC Exascale Center of Excellence for Personalized Medicine in Europe. Permit COE focuses on simulations of cellular mechanistic models, which are essential to translate omics data into medical actions. The performance of the simulation software right now is still not enough to address certain medical problems such as tumor evolution or patient-specific treatments. So Permit COE will scale up the software to the current HPC exascale systems to enable the creation of actional models of cellular functions of medical relevance. To achieve this, Permit has a series of objectives. The first one is to optimize selected cell level simulation software to run in exascale platforms. Second, Permit is developing a series of use cases to showcase um, the implementation of permit COE solutions in, in HPC environments in areas of uh, clinical relevance, such as drug synergies for cancer treatment or multiscale modeling of uh, COVID-19 virus and uh, patient tissues. In addition, permit COE also has as objectives to train biomedical professionals in the use of HPC exascale permit COE tools to build the basis for the sustainability of the permit COE and to integrate personalized medicine communities into the European HPC exascale ecosystem. Today's presenter is Adam Schmelko. Adam is a third year doctoral student in the Department of Distributed and Dependable Systems at Charles University in Prague with a dissertation topic of employing parallel computing in data intensive tasks. He specializes in GPU programming and in the analysis of memory accesses in programs. His current research topic involves development of tools for effective memory layouts and transversals, traversals of data structures. So Adam, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Let me share my screen. So hi guys, uh, my name is Adam Schmelko. I'm from Charles University in Prague. And uh, as you already heard, my topic is in the GPUs. So today I will try to uh, learn you some high level tools, which, we are, uh, which will enable you to write uh, GPU code without much extensive knowledge of the GPUs and also uh, aiming with the least effort of, of, of programming on, on GPUs. So um, for the agenda, after some motivation, I will uh, start to explain a uh, few of the chosen um, tools that I have prepared for today. And these will be uh, OpenMP and it's a feature for offloading code to GPUs. Uh, then I will talk about Thrust, which is an NVIDIA C++ library, uh, very much inspired by standard C++. And finally, I will talk about a uh, very interesting thing, which I uh, uh, simply call uh, STDPAR. So let's just uh, jump into it. Um, uh, I think without a doubt, uh, GPUs can uh, be very helpful in the scientific research. Uh, they can enable us to process bigger data sets, uh, process this data in finer details, or even enable uh, real-time visualization or interaction with data. 
when you code uh, or you uh, port a code from CPU to GPU, you can get a very nice speed ups ranging very easily from uh, 10 times, but uh, usually it's much, much more. For that, I included a uh, image, uh, which is a comparison of CPU and GPU version of uh, a special hierarchical clustering, which was my master thesis. And uh, there you can see that even a thousand times speed up uh, can be achieved um, when comparing GPU with serial CPU version. Well, but uh, this comes with some uh, caveats. Um, uh, programming on GPU is, uh, is rather complex. Um, com programming in these low level languages uh, requires some uh, expertise. And also usually it uh, comes with a lot of boilerplate. Uh, not speaking about that uh, these languages uh, ex expose uh, very big uh, overwhelming API. And indeed, if I uh, just counted all the lines of code that were required to provide for this uh, uh, optimized uh, uh, cl hierarchy clustering, you can easily see that it uh, can, uh, can add up to thousands. So the aim for this presentation will be, uh, can we make this simpler? Can we somehow enable uh, programming on GPUs for, uh, for general programmers? And I think that uh, we can partly say yes to this, to this question. And it's mainly for because of the emergence of these high level frameworks uh, over, over years, recent years. Uh, let them be uh, annotation based frameworks such as OpenMP or OpenACC or more uh, standard library like oriented approaches such as Thrust. Um, also, it's good to mention uh, uh, G NVIDIA CUDA libraries, which I would say are not, are not that high level because uh, they require a lot of boilerplate and do not have very uh, simple API. However, if you solving some specific problem, uh, these are the definitely best ways to go. And not speaking that uh, now there are also some Python solutions for, for programming on GPUs. Um, today I will be I will be mainly talking about NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA CUDA GPUs. However, I do not think that uh, at least some of the frameworks are applicable to other GPUs or accelerators uh, in general. So let me start with the first tool, which is OpenMP. Um, OpenMP is pretty pretty popular tool. Uh, it's well established in uh, in the HPC community, and uh, uh, it's a uh, nice thing is that it provides these compiler annotations, so uh, these pragmas, so a programmer can very easily uh, annotate some, for example, for loop, and then the compiler does the parallelization of this for loop for the programmer, so they do not have to do it by hand. And uh, in the recent versions of the OpenMP, there started to be a support for offloading parts of codes to the accelerators, which means to the GPUs. And I will be talking especially about this. Um, I want to know that I could have chosen OpenACC as well. However, I chose OpenAP uh, because, OpenMP, sorry, because, um, I think that OpenMP is more popular and also every feature that I will be talking about with uh, um, OpenMP can be applied literally one-to-one -to, -one to OpenACC. Um, just the syntax will be different. So I, so I just stick to OpenMP. Um, yeah, so, so let's get into it. Let's start offloading with OpenMP. Um, so let me first uh, explain the example for today, which I will be uh, um, repeating multiple times and, and on which I will be showing these, these features of OpenMP. And it is uh, simple gradient computation. 
uh, it consists just of one very single for loop. Yeah, and, it, and in the for loops body, there is a single one, simple one dimensional stencil, which can be interpreted as, a, as a, some sort of a gradient. Also note that I uh, omitted first and the last element from the for loop to make body simplest, uh, as simple as possible. Okay, so uh, um, if you were to ask a wise OpenMP programmer, how uh, could he comp uh, in optimize this code for uh, OpenMP CPU multi-threaded uh, uh, work? he would write something like this. So I repeat that this is just for the CPU. And um, the pragma here is pragma OMP parallel four, which uh, tells the compiler when the compiler compiles this part of code to first generate some code that creates the threads. And then it generates some code that uh, distributes uh, the work of the for loop among these threads that were created. So uh, pretty simple. And now uh, uh, let's ask the question, how would this look like with the um, open MPs offloading feature? And uh, frankly, it's, it's very similar. Uh, all you need to do is just to add a target uh, declaration. And now when open MP, um, capable compiler will visit this, uh, this uh, region, it will know that this part of code needs to be executed, offloaded to an accelerator, in our case, a GPU. However, um, it may seem sound very simple, but there are plenty of um, things that are hidden under the hood, uh, especially talking about the, the generated code that is done by the compiler. So I, I will take some time in the next future slides uh, explaining these, these generated parts. I think it makes sense to, to understand them in, sort, in order to uh, really know how to uh, write very much, very performant code with uh, OpenMP uh, target uh, declaration. Um, so, let me first zoom out from this example uh, and uh, let's see what uh, would be the normal uh, uh, code before and after this for loop. So in my case, I'm adding some allocation of a memory in the first two lines. Then I'm somehow initializing this, this data, this memory uh, before the for loop and the for loop happens. And after the for loop, I um, I work with the results of the for loop. So what is special about this offloading is that uh, before we had just a single entity, which was a CPU, but right now we have two entities that are working on our code. It's a CPU and an accelerator, yeah? And uh, uh, there is also a different term to it. Uh, CPU is usually called the host and accelerator is uh, usually called a device or a target in, in this OpenMP uh, semantics. So um, when uh, a CPU or when, if I were to simulate this part of code, then uh, a CPU would uh, uh, go through first three lines, it would allocate the data and etc. But then when the CPU would uh, uh, visit uh, this part of the code, which is supposed to run an accelerator, the CPU handles the control, transfers the control to the GPU, and the GPU starts computing this for loop while CPU is waiting for the GPU to finish its loop. And when the GPU finishes, the CPU synchronizes and uh, uh, continues to work with the data. Yeah, so uh, it's the thing that is important is that we have right now two different ent entities. Um, so next, the question is, uh, what about the data, data pointers X and Y? Um, how come that we have two distinct entities, they can work on the same data pointers and same memory? 
And the thing is that this is uh, this is a little more complicated. Uh, actually, GPUs and CPUs have different memory spaces. And this means that if I allocate some memory on a CPU and I uh, somehow pass this memory pointer to a GPU, uh, GPU cannot simply reference this memory pointer because uh, GPU has, has its own memory, has its own RAM. So it would point to some, some garbage. So what an OpenMP compiler needs to do is that it needs to generate code for allocation of the memory on the GPU. And also it needs to perform the copying of the data from CPU and to GPU and back. And actually this is the stuff that is being done uh, around the target region. So uh, if I took this example um, from the uh, previous slide, uh, you could see that this could uh, somehow translate to this uh, pseudocode. So first there would be some uh, allocation of the same data on the, uh, of the, some memory on the GPU. And then there would be a copying of the data from CPU to GPU for both X and Y pointers. Then there would be some call to a GPU code. So, so the GPU will perform this for loop in parallel, of course. And then the, after the GPU and CPU will synchronize, there will be a copy back and, and some free of the GPU pointers. Okay, this uh, sort of makes sense. However, uh, if you were to look closer, you would see that this is not an optimal generation of code because uh, if you looked more closely into the uh, body of the for loop, you would see that, for example, uh, data from the pointer Y is only written to and it's not read. And data of the pointer X is just read and not written to. So what does it translate to? Uh, we, can, we can omit copying uh, uh, data from C of uh, Y to, from CPU to GPU, right? Because GPU does not read it. It only writes to, uh, to that place. And also we can omit uh, writing the data from GPU to CPU for the X uh, data back because GPU does not modify it, yeah? Um, so we need to somehow have a way how to, how to control these data transfers. And of course, OpenMP target extension is prepared for this. OpenMP expects that uh, usual ordinary accelerators do have different memory spaces and that we should optimize for it. So uh, OpenMP has a map directive for this, which lets programmers specify Actually, the thing that I, I was talking about, the direction. So we have either two, just two, just copying to GPU, just copying from GPU or, or both. And also it lets us specify the, the size of the data that needs to be both allocated and copied. Um, yeah, so uh, when I come, come back to this slide, uh, for example, for the Y variable, we do not use the first and the last elements of these. No, these do not have to be copied. Yeah. So the optimized uh, annotation would look like this. We would uh, we would use the map directive with to and and from as I was speaking before, and also we we can use uh, to specify the size of the of the new data array, which will be. Uh, mapped uh, when, when working with GPU. So first we specify the beginning and then we specify the number of elements that needs to be allocated and or copied. Uh, yeah, and this, uh, thankfully this is usually not, uh, not necessary to code, uh, uh, to, to write uh, explicitly. Um, OpenMP enabled uh, compilers are quite good at inferring the context automatically. So sometimes they are, they are quite good at um, saying that, okay, Y is only uh, being written to, so we do not need to copy it uh, to the GPU and, and, and et cetera. Um, so, okay, so right now we know how to control data transfers, which is, uh, I would say, a good achievement for the OpenMP 
for learning how to code uh, on GPUs using OpenMP. So the next part of the of this OpenMP introduction, let me start by uh, sort of uh, uh, breaking your acquired confidence by saying that uh, this Pragma OMP target parallel four that I've been using in the previous slide is actually slow. And uh, it has to do something with the actual uh, uh, distribution of the work to the GPU to the GPU threads. And before I could explain it, it more further, let me just uh, take a quick step back into the CUDA hierarchies. So uh, or CUDA thread hierarchy. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's uh, natural. Naturally, CPU and GPU have different architectures. Uh, CPU is much more um, strives for a lower latency. It has big caches and very versatile cores. However, GPUs does strive more for the throughput rather than the latency. It has much much less cache for the for the core and the cores are very, very simple. Um, we can say at least uh, CUDA GPUs uh, consist of uh, something called streaming multiprocessors. One streaming multiprocessor can be um, very simply uh, be, uh, uh, we can imagine it as a single CPU core. However, this streaming multiprocessors has plenty of, uh, of cores uh, for computing, let's say, floating point or integers. Um, and uh, in this image, we can uh, uh, imagine that one streaming multiprocessor is just this one line of the green squares, which, uh, which do represent cores. So we have sort of a two dimensions in the, in the hardware of a GPU. We have a width of the, of the streaming multiprocessor and then we have some amount of uh, multiprocessors. Usually, um, it's tens, uh, maybe small hundreds. Um, yeah, and now let's look at the software part. And when a GPU code is run, um, we need to specify how many threads will run this GPU code. And in uh, CUDA terminology, uh, this is called a grid. So uh, a grid of threads run a GPU code. And this grid specifies the shape and also the number of threads that will run that exact, uh, that specific GPU code. So uh, you can see on the image that we have a sort of three layer hierarchies. Uh, we have on top, we have, we have a grid which is composition of thread blocks, which are groups or blocks of threads. So instead of having just one big group of threads, now we have something one layer more. We have grid, which, which consists of multiple of these groups of threads. Uh, in CPU, you would have just one group of threads. It does not make sense to think about multiple groups of the threads that can run concurrently on a CPU. However, for GPU, it makes a lot of sense due to the hardware software mapping. And uh, the mapping goes as follows. Um, when there is some GPU code uh, to be run on a, on a GPU, um, the grid blocks are distributed evenly uh, over the streaming multiprocessors that the GPU has. So, as a single exa simple example, if we had a grid of uh, 100 blocks and we had a GPU of 10 streaming multiprocessors, then these 100 blocks will be distributed over 10, the, uh, 10 SMs and each SM would uh, run uh, in, in average 10 blocks. And with this, I am sort of uh, leading into the problem which we had with the OpenMP. Um, but uh, let's first uh, talk about uh, that uh, how OpenMP can express these different layers of parallelism. Yeah, OpenMP since should be prepared for different uh, different uh, thread hierarchies, and it indeed is. Uh, it has three different keywords 
which define different layers of parallelism. These are teams, parallel and SIMD. And for uh, if we were to use these in general OpenMP CPU multi-core programming, uh, SIMD would mean uh, a hint for a compiler to do vectorization. Parallel would mean to spawn as many threads as as uh, as, as as I have a course, let's say, as, as I want. And teams uh, is just an arbitrary uh, composition of these of these threads with no um, no other meaning than just a logical meaning. However, in in uh, accelerators and in GPUs, this meaning is uh, not only logical. Um, the open MP to CUDA GPU mapping is uh, as follows. We can uh, we can imagine that teams map to the blocks of grid, uh, parallel maps to the threads of block, and seemed. I don't think that there's 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 that much usage of uh, of seemed in in CUDA mapping. We can we can imagine that it, it that it maps to a thread. So let's look at this example again and let's uh, point where the problem could be. So really we are uh, using this parallel keyword here, which means that uh, we are uh, parallelizing this for loop only by the threads that will be run on a single streaming multiprocessor, right? So if you write it like this, only just one uh, row one lane of the whole gpu will be will be utilized and this is this is definitely a problem because we are losing some performance that we could gain so the hot and burning question is how do we modify this this uh this di pragma directive to spawn more than just one cuda block which is happening right now so we simply need to just um use this teams keyword in the in the target region and that's uh, that's exactly what we will do so we need to divide the these for loops along these teams so let's just do it uh, we first write pragma omp target target teams uh, which spawns some amount of teams it is definitely implementation defined uh, we can uh, we can uh, assume that is some multiple of number of streaming multiprocessors in in GPU, and uh, then here is the code that uh, specifies the chunk size, which will be the size of one chunk one team will will handle of the of our for loop, and then we need to divide this for loop by chunks. And the one way to do it is to iterate over. Over the, over the teams, so to introduce one more for loop. However, since we have one more for loop, we need to uh, parallelize it too. Thankfully for this, this is there is the OpenMP uh, distribute keyword, which does it for us. And finally, when we are, are here in the second for loop, we are finally running this code parallel in teams, which means in, uh, in, in different CUDA thread blocks. So right now we can finally use this parallel parallel keyword. So um, each team will parallelize over the threads in in the in the uh, CUDA thread block. So uh, by writing it like this, we we use all the thread hierarchies that there are on the on the CUDA GPU. But I. But I, I know that this, this is quite a complicated example, and um, some of you may say that this is not a pretty, not much high level, and that uh, uh, some of you may also ask, why shouldn't uh, OpenMP do this for me, right? Why, why shouldn't it distribute uh, not only by parallel, but also by teams? And indeed, OpenMP have a handy construct for it. All we need to write is just to, all we need to do is just to write uh, it like this, open a pragma OMP target teams distribute parallel for. And uh, thanks to this um, pragma, the, the both the thread hierarchies are utilized and both and hold the GPU is, 
is utilized when this uh, for loop is being executed. And there is even better way. And uh, in uh, let's say recent versions of the OpenMP, uh, they, they introduce a keyword called loop. And this keyword uh, hints OpenMP compiler that the next for loop is, uh, is independent and that the programmer won't, wants uh, OpenMP to parallelize it over all the hierarchies that there are in the specific accelerator that we are targeting. So when I was reading uh, um, uh, programming guide for the uh, NVIDIA implementation of OpenMP, that they said that this is the preferred way to go. So uh, uh, this is this is all nice. Um, we, uh, if I were to summarize what we've already, what we just learned is that uh, we, I think that we have the full control over how the code is generated and how the data is controlled and how the threats and or the work is distributing among GPU threads. So uh, one would say that this is enough for me to start working, start programming on GPUs using OpenMP. So uh, I thought this too, and yesterday when I was writing this presentation, I uh, I wanted to try this. I I uh, so uh, let me explain this uh, scenario that may or may not have happened yesterday. So let's let's have this first step, which uh, where we would apply all the mentioned optimizations that I that I that I talked about. Um, we would use the uh, target loop directive. We would use the data. Uh, uh, optimize data data control, and uh, then what I want to do is to measure whether this um, uh, GPU GPU code will run faster than a CPU multi-core code. Yeah, so what I did was that I measured the multi-core code, measured the GPU code, uh, the duration of the GPU code, and then I I tried to um, See what was the difference. I was expecting that uh, GPU will be run will be running much 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 faster. However, to my surprise, I, I saw that uh, not only the GPU the CPU code was faster, it was faster by a big margin. So I was I was left pretty much clueless. But uh, then I realized what what could be a problem. Partly it was due to my uh, um, way how how I was measuring it. However, um, some of you may already know what what could be the problem because I already discussed it, and it is the the data allocation section. So let me uh, show you the the code from a different perspective, the perspective from which I was measuring it, and uh, so I, I I've wrapped my my optimized for loop for for GPU into a function called f, and then I I call this function multiple times, and I think that this is very similar to some real life examples, right? Um, for example, when we are computing this gradient, uh, we want to compute multiple gradients in some time steps. Yeah, so we want to run this function preferably multiple times for some amount of iterations. And uh, the thing here is that uh, each time this pragma is visited, the GPU memory is allocated and deallocated. And this is a big problem because this brings a huge, huge overhead, uh, much bigger than I, than I expected. So uh, how can we fix this? Um, I would say that the fix is very easy. Uh, you just need to think about what you would do if you were to to normally compile uh, program this for a CPU. So you would just allocate the memory once and then reuse the, the memory pointers multiple times and work on the data uh, that uh, is this pointer pointing to. There is no need to allocate this memory again and again. So that's what uh, we can also do in OpenMP. Uh, we can rewrite it in, uh, in this way. Uh, using the data directive. 
And this data directive uh, creates, uh, again, some region where uh, GPU data will be active and will, uh, will be staying alive on a GPU, meaning that it will be allocated just once and they allocated after we leave this data, a data region. So thanks to just this optimization, uh, I could finally see a better performance of the, of the whole code. Uh, which so I finally said to myself that I I, I could uh, code on Open and P on GPUs. Um, however, there are different ways how to sort this problem, solve this problem, and I think there are some some of these ways are even preferred. For example, there is a Pragma OMP target data enter and data exit. These are the standalone pragmas that they do not create any sort of a region as here. Uh, you can, for example, use them. Uh, you can write uh, a function called allocate GPU memory. And inside that function, you would write target data and enter to allocate the memory. And also you can use target data exit to deallocate memory. Um, in any place of the code without the need to specifying regions. Yeah, so, uh, so it's more, let's say, imperative way how to look at this. And the next way is to, is to utilize CUDA unified memory. This, uh, indeed, this, is, uh, this can be used only on NVIDIA GPUs, but it is very useful, I would say. When I was reading the implement, NVIDIA implementation of OpenMP, they were, they were uh, saying that when we, when we use unified memory, we do not have to even care or need to write any of the data or map directives. Everything would be, hand, would be handled for you. And uh, to my surprise, it was uh, almost totally true. Uh, even without these data directives, I had the same performance uh, as before which was very surprising. And the uh, uh, thing how they achieved this is that uh, CUDA unified memory lets, uh, to put it very simply, lets GPU read a CPU portions, uh, portions of CPU memory. Um, uh, to go more into detail, uh, the thing that is being done actually is that each time uh, there is a dynamic allocation on a CPU. There is also this dynamic allocation on GPU. And when one is uh, accessing this, this memory region from CPU or from GPU, uh, this, uh, there is a transparent transfer between these devices done for you. So really you do not have to care about any sort of allocations, which was the actual problem here. And also you do not almost need to care about any of the, of the optimized mappings. So this is very, very handy stuff. Uh, yeah, and I think that the most important thing to ask before I finish uh, this OpenMP part is how easy is it to compile uh, this OpenMP GPU code? And actually it is, it is fairly straightforward. If you are using uh, NVIDIA C++, C++ compiler, uh, this compiler is included in the, in the recent uh, NVIDIA HPC SDKs, so it's not that difficult to get it. And uh, when you have it, uh, all, you just, all you need to do is pass this MP flag. And you can also specify what do you want to target for. So you can target for either multi-core, so the general CPU multi-core uh, executable, or or actually the GPU. And the handy thing here is that uh, when you are targeting GPU, actually both the CPU multi-core and GPU variants are generated. And then when you run this executable, for example, on a machine that uh, where the CPU, G, sorry, GPU is not present, then there is an automatic fallback to the, to the multi-core implementation. So this is, this is pretty handy stuff. But I assume that this is this is also done by by other uh, compilers, not only at C++. And also, I wanted to add this um, other flag, uh, which is a GPU compilation flag, and uh, it allows you to specify a, a, a concrete uh, 
GPU uh, architecture, but you can also uh, pass it a managed uh, word which uh, will run or which will compile the OpenMP for with the unified memory that I mentioned uh, in last slide. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's basically for the OpenMP. Um, NVC++ also supports OpenACC, so uh, you do not need to switch compilers. Um, also, uh, NVC++ is not the only compiler that supports, supports this OpenMP offloading feature. Definitely a GCC can do it as well. Of course, if you have it configured properly, but uh, I chose NVC++ because uh, its usage is really, really, really straightforward. Uh, good. So uh, let's move to the second tool that I've got prepared. And it is Thrust. And Thrust is, uh, has completely different paradigm than, than OpenMP. There are, um, there are no need for any compiler annotations, no need for, for any pragmas. Thrust is uh, just a C++ slash CUDA library. And it's very much inspired by the standard library algorithms, which you will see. And also uh, I added these uh, rapid and productive uh, buzzwords, which uh, the authors of uh, Thrust claim that production, productivity, uh, sorry, the development is rapid and productive. And I, I think that uh, they are not very far from true. So uh, let me get into it. Here I took, uh, I would say the first uh, example from the Thrust web pages and uh, it is a uh, sorting of a big vector on a GPU. So first, uh, what you can note is that there are, again, there are no, no pragma directives. It's all done with pure uh, C++ constructs. So uh, uh, let me go through it. So first there is this uh, host vector uh, defined and host vector or thrust host vector is just the standard C++ vector with this host prefix, which should uh, tell you that this vector will hold its data on a CPU on the host. And then we also have the device vector, the counterpart that uh, is again has the same API as the standard vector, which means that you can uh, randomly assigned to it and it, it uh, increases in its size automatically, but all its data is managed in the device, in the GPU. So if I went through, through the code, um, there is this uh, generate function from, from just from standard C++ that fills the host vector with some random data. And then there is this very, very interesting uh, assignment so we are defining a device vector and we are assigning the host vector to it. And with this single assignment, the whole transferring of the data from CPU to GPU is, is, uh, is done for us. And let me stop here for a little because this is, uh, this is very nice. Uh, if you were to comp uh, implement this in the plain C CUDA C++, you would need to write at least 10 lines of code uh, for this to work. So this is very, very handy stuff. Uh, yeah, then when we have the, our data on device on a GPU, we can call one of the plenty of the thrust algorithms, which is sort. And um, as I already mentioned, thrust is very much inspired by the standard library and standard library uses uh, iterators plentifully. So what this sort of, uh, algorithm takes is the two iterators, which, uh, which specify the beginning and the ending of the device vector. So uh, GPU knows which part of the, device, of, the, of the memory to sort. And uh, then we can assume that this is sorted and we can write a code that uh, copies the data from the GPU back to CPU. And uh, one way to do it is to use another uh, algorithm which is called copy, thrust copy. And as, as expected, it takes uh, 
beginning and ending of the uh, source vector and uh, also the uh, beginning of the destination vector and performs the transfer uh, for us, for the transfer from GPU to CPU for us. Again, which would be written in a in, in lot of boilerplate and lines when if we were to code it by hand. So yeah, this is this is all very nice. And uh, uh, Thrust has plenty of these standard, standard algorithms. So uh, if you are experienced in C++, you know that C++ has uh, algorithms such as transform for, for modifying vectors, reduce, for doing uh, the sums, uh, the sum reduction, or, um, or or prefix sum, or sorting, or reordering, copying, uh, plenty of stuff. So let me just uh, breeze through uh, two of them, and uh, by breezing through it, I, I I just want to show that uh, the usage is is equally is is the same as as you would write the standard C++ code. Right, so for example, this trust trust transform takes uh, one or in this case two input arrays and one output array. Input arrays are x and y, and output array is y. And then it performs, uh, then it takes uh, data from input array, transforms this data, and writes it to the output array. And this transformation is defined by by this uh, this pra, this lambda. A lambda function that is uh, passed to this to this transform, and in our case we are doing the the very 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 popular uh, transformation. Um, the only difference here is uh, from the from the standard C plus plus that we need to prefix this lambda by this device annotation, and this is here to to tell the compiler to generate G, G, uh, GPU instructions for this Lambda and not CPU instructions. Yeah, and then uh, there is also this reduce. Um, I, I would say that uh, its uh, usage is also very straightforward. And uh, the thing that I would like to say here is that uh, the way how these uh, algorithms are, are implemented is usually that uh, they are fine tuned for each of the GPUs that are are there in uh, Nvidia. So uh, uh, I would bet, or I would say that it's very difficult to write uh, more performant code by hand than just using these thrust uh, algorithms. Yeah. So uh, uh, in, for some cases, at least for some simpler cases. Um, Going low level will result in in slower code than just writing or using this high level high level thrust uh, library. And uh, to add more expressibility to to the thrust uh, algorithms or to standard algorithms, there is also a, um, thrust also allows for so called fancy iterators. And there are plenty of these iterators. However, uh, I, I, I will I will talk about just two most important ones. So there is a transform iterator, and this one is very good when you want to fuse some operations. So let's say that we want to have a sum reduction over an array x. However, we want to negate each each element before uh, before the sum reduction. Um, and this could be any other operation, not only negation, uh, we can also square it, for example. And so what could one way you could you could go is that you could first run thrust transform to negate it and then run thrust reduce to to reduce it. But what we are doing is that you are uh, you are uh, reading the same data twice. And uh, this is not that. Uh, Optim that uh, that optimized as as uh, as if you were to uh, process it all in just one swipe, and this is called a fusion. And uh, transform iterator lets you perform this fusion. Uh, transform iterator is just a wrapper around a generic uh, iterator, and uh, 
it uh, so it takes as a first argument an iterator which it uh, wraps around and as a second argument it takes a function that is applied to the value of this iterator but this function is applied only when this this whole iterator is referenced which will be ultimately just in the single reduce call and then there we have a permutation iterator which uh, is interesting, I think, because uh, it has very similarities with how NumPy indexes uh, data. So let's imagine that we have a data array and we again want to want to do a red, some reduction over it, but we do not want to have a some reduction over the whole data, but over some subset of the indices. So what you would do in OpenMP is that you can uh, uh, create another array, which is array of indices, and then you would uh, index the data array by this index indices array. And this is exactly what the permutation iterator does. The, the syntax is very similar to transform iterator. So, so yeah, this is uh, very handy stuff. And uh, very, very often it happens to me that uh, I thought that this special uh, function I could not be able to port to, to Thrust. However, using these fancy iterators, I was able to, to sort of mold this, this problem into being able to, to be used by Thrust and to, to, to utilize the, the most performance out of it, which was, which was quite nice. And uh, yeah, let me go uh, now. Uh, yeah, let me explain how, how would this example from OpenMP be rewritten with Thrust. And for that, we would use a for each function uh, or for each algorithm. Um, for each is a very powerful algorithm. It takes uh, takes two uh, iterators, uh, which are uh, in my case counting iterators, which are another uh, another fancy thrust iterator. But all it does it is that is that it iterates over natural numbers. So it uh, here we iterate from one to n minus one. And then by passing a lambda, we pass the body of the function, uh, body of the of the for loop, which we were uh, optimizing for in our OpenMP uh, part. So here, um, uh, unlike OpenMP, uh, all the threads are automatically uh, exhausted. They are on GPU, so you do not have to care about utilizing thread hierarchies at all. Everything is done for you. However, there's a, this is also downsized at the same time because you cannot access these thread hierarchies, which could give some, at least uh, some bigger boost. Uh, however, um, for each is very strong uh, way how to express some GPU code in very, very simple manner. Uh, so building uh, building the code with uh, that uses Thrust is again extremely simple. All you need is just NVCC compiler or also NVC++ that I mentioned earlier. NVCC is, is much easier to get because it is included in all CUDA toolkit. Um, CUDA toolkit, so uh, uh, so there's no 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 not not difficult to to work with it as well. And uh, let me very, very seriously go through the last, uh, last, uh, uh, I would say cherry on top, because uh, I would say that this uh, tool is one layer above the thrust in the manner of uh, high level uh, ability to work on a GPUs. So again, let me uh, introduce example very similar to the example that I did uh, at the beginning of the thrust. Um, but here I am not using nothing fancy. I'm just using standard vectors, standard algorithms. Um, so uh, here I allocate a, a vector of some, some, uh, some, uh, some data. And then I use standard uh, algorithm transform uh, where I do the, the squares. The one difference here is that I use a, a execution policy as a specially parallel execution policy. Execution policies were added to C++ 14 or 17, and they hint the compiler that uh, this Lambda is safe to be executed in parallel. 
Yeah. So if we were to compile this with the standard GCC compiler, then uh, we can expect that this transform will be parallelized over CPU threads. Maybe it, it would even use OpenMP inside. But what we can also do is that we can compile it with NVC++ and with this uh, special STD par flag. And now each uh, standard algorithm that has this STD ex execution par uh, pa execution policy will be automatically offloaded to GPU for us. And here I added the words free performance and it indeed feels like a free performance because we really do not need to change a standard C++ code in any way. And we still can get a, a GPU um, uh, performance out of it. And uh, how, how this NVC STD par works, uh, actually it works, uh, it uses all the stuff that I already talked about. Uh, it uses unified memory, so we do not need to care about uh, some, some uh, allocations of uh, GPU memory. And under, under the hood, it calls the thrust library, so uh, not, not very unexpected. Um, so let me finish this by very uh, swiftly talking about the, how this all could be written in the plain low-level CUDA C++. I think that uh, I should talk about this. So if I were to rewrite any of these examples in the CUDA C++, uh, first thing I need to say is that, that, that I would write a lot of lines of code. Uh, everything that was either compiled, uh, generated for me or, or wrapped in a nice function, I would need to do by myself, including memory allocation, transfers, writing GPU kernel, dividing the works, uh, all this stuff. And uh, I would even say that for some problems, going low level does not introduce any new or better way how to solve this problem. I would even say, as I already said, that uh, using thrust may be even, or OpenMP may, be, may bring even better performance than trying to optimize in low level, because we just couldn't, would never get to the same performance as hand-tuned uh, way how the Thrust implementers implemented uh, some algorithms. But uh, of course, for some other problems, uh, exposing the full power of GPU can bring some, some performance, which is, uh, which is very obvious. So concluding this uh, presentation, um, yeah, I, I, I showed uh, just three of the tools, but I think that there are plenty others. Um, I, yeah, I did not even touch the topic of uh, CUDA on Python, which I think can be quite interesting with uh, uh, just-in-time compiled code. But I think that uh, for programmers that are quite used to uh, C++ programming, uh, these three tools are definitely a way to go and can really enable you performance of a GPU for, for very simple, almost none of a trade-off. So yeah, and with this note, I think that uh, uh, it's all. So thanks for the attention. And if you have any questions, um, I'm ready to, uh, to, to answer them. Thank you very much, Adam. So we are at the top of the hour, but if there's anyone who has a bit more time and can and has any question, we can answer a couple of questions uh, here. Elise, you raised your hand. You can you can unmute and talk uh, if you wish. Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Um, thank you so much. I have one question. Uh, so I, I would like to know the overview of all these methods um, as per the computation power and the computation time. So would you, I, I have a question to the speaker. Uh, would you please uh, give an overview uh, quickly the, as a comparison? So which, which technique is faster? Mm -hmm. uh, say, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it really, really depends on the problem. Um, if 
you had a specific problem that can be very easily mapped to, to FRAST. For example, you need to just compute some reduction or uh, modify some big uh, arrays in specific way. Definitely trust would be way to go since uh, again, as I said, uh, these uh, uh, algorithms are hand tuned for each of the GPUs architecture that there is. But uh, it's very, very, uh, uh, there are plenty of problems where trust uh, cannot be applied. So uh, in this way, I would say that uh, since STDPAR is just an extension of trust, uh, then OpenMP would be wiser choice. Uh, if I were to compare um, the implementation of one problem uh, in, implemented in OpenMP and in Thrust, I would bet that uh, on the on the very simple problems, the, the difference would not be very visible. Maybe it would uh, wouldn't be any. For example, for for parallelizing some loops. And also for parallelizing some reductions, I think that here uh, we are in very similar uh, uh, timescales. However, um, um, if I were to if I were to try to uh, um, well, I don't know. I, I think that uh, that uh, if you are using if you have a really easy easy problem then it doesn't matter if you are using openmp and trust i think that uh, that uh, the performance will be the same so uh, the only difference i see here is that uh, openmp is more favorable if you already have this code written so you can just annotate it while in trust you really need to rewrite all the code to use this library and uh, which can uh, have quite an impact on your, on your code base Mm, thank you. Thank you, Adam. We have also a question in the Q&A. So, do you have something similar in R, as you mentioned, there is in Python CUDA, which can enhance the right time for R code apart from RCCP, RCPP? Oh, well, I, I am not aware of anything in R, but I wouldn't be surprised if there, there, were, there wasn't anything. So uh, I'm sorry, I, I do not know, but I, I think that there, there can be something. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? We still, if you have any questions, you can still write them. And in this last minute or so, I will share my screen to let you know about our next activities, let's say. Oh, Binish, you, you raise your hand again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I was thinking, uh, so I have worked with CPU, GPU, but uh, for the rest of the, uh, these algorithms, I would like to, I'm really interested in because I am coming from the C++ background. So is there any kind of uh, uh, method we can, like examples where we can learn it? Or uh, I mean, I mean, I can simply Google maybe, but yeah, it would be more explanatory if I can uh, hear it in verse. Hmm. Uh, for Trust, there are definitely very nice tutorials in, on their web page. Uh, they have uh, dedicated the whole page to their features that they offer, such as these uh, algorithms and iterators. So I think that there is the, definitely a way to go. For, um, uh, for the OpenMP, I, I, I needed to browse uh, much, much more. Um, However, I think that OpenMP also has some specification, which of course is not that easy to read as some examples. However, I think that you can as well uh, find uh, many uh, similar, also similar presentations that, uh, that show these examples. Uh, to be honest, I did not find very, very good examples for OpenMP, but for trust, there, there, there definitely are many. I'm looking for the links that I can find. <laughs> yeah, the, this is definitely one for trust. Also, uh, the trust, I think that uh, 
Yeah, the STD par uses Thrust as a backend, but Thrust uses something else for a backend. It's called CUB. Um, I can uh, I can Google it, and CUB is uh, I think it's a subset of Thrust, and it is definitely lower level than than Thrust. But if you if you were to work with uh, streams, with uh, GPU streams, and with overlapping uh, data transfers with the uh, with the GPU computations, Thrust is not that good at it. It has some ways to do it, but for me they were always they were quite um, surprising that they work. But with with Kub, um, you have you have very nice interface. And you can you can uh, rely, I would say, rely on this more if you are if you are lower level level programmer. They do not have that many of uh, let's say uh, how do they call them primitives, but they have some. So this is also something that can be checked. Okay, thank you, Adam. Let me. Just if there's anyone who has one more question, still you can go for it, but I'll I'll just share my screen with our next uh, activities that you can see. So permit, we go on summer holidays now, let's say for the for the webinar series of permit, but uh, we'll have uh, the next webinar in September, on the 13th of September, where Joaquin Do Paso will present digital twins for drug repurposing by integrating mathematical modeling and machine learning, bridging the gap between in silico and real world data. That's going to be on the 13th of September, and you can already sign in in the, in the webinar section of the Permit uh, COE website, where you can also see the video of this, the recording of this session tomorrow, once we have uploaded it. And then in September, uh, Permit CIA participates in the organization of a workshop at the Basel Computational Biology Conference. So the workshop is entitled Mechanistic and AI Digital Twins in Personalized Medicine, two sides of the same coin. And if you want to apply for this, the submission deadline is on the 20th of June. So it's in a few days. Um, and, but it's uh, open now, so you can apply this day. So, and I see there are no more questions. I think we'll leave it uh, here for today. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Adam, for uh, the presentation. Uh, and see you next time. Bye.